Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com and today we have a fun hand from a $2,000 buy-in tournament at the Hard Rock. We are in the money, we did it, we succeeded. Really though, getting in the money is not that big of a success. I think a lot of people really want to get in the money. I posted a video on my Twitter just the other day about downswings and someone said, I'm on a sick downswing. I haven't cashed in like 12 tournaments. But like cashing is not the goal. Getting the minimum back is not what you should be striving for. While there are certainly times where you should sneak into the money, usually when you have a short or middle stack, whenever you have a big stack, which is where you often wanna be, where the best players often are, you really want to be trying to accumulate chips. And you win a lot of money in tournaments by winning tournaments. You're gonna find that the graphs of all the best players trickle down, 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 and then they have a big spike up when they win off the screen. Ha. Then they trickle down, 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 and then they win again, trickle down, 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 and they win again. And you have to make sure you're having those wins. If you are focusing on getting caches, you may not trickle down quite as much, but you rarely have those big upward spikes. And that is where you succeed as a tournament player. So anyway, here we have Queen Jack of Hearts. We raise it up. Old guy in the big blind, three bets off of our 40 big blind effective stack. Ugh. Um, so here it's very important to ask, who is this old guy? Some old guys are loose, splashy, maniacal. Some old guys are on the tight side. I would typically tell you that a lot of old guys are on the tight side, especially when they're three betting from the big blind. That said, I don't know that. And it's important to realize who your specific opponent is. And if you don't know who it is, don't make big, broad assumptions about them. So many players come to me presenting me a hand where they say, okay, this player is tight and aggressive. I played with him for two orbits. I know everything about him. And then they like, turns out their opponent raised it up like 6-3 suited or something under the gun. Like, yeah, you were wrong. And you made big assumptions because of it. So be very careful with making big assumptions that may lead you to make substantial errors. Because right here, for example, say you told me that definitively this guy was a super nit. He's only through betting aces and kings and queens and ace king. I would just fold. I don't want to fold queen jack suited, but I would just fold because he's a super nit and I should fold. But I don't know anything about this player. His small three bet size certainly looks like he has a good hand, but I don't know. It's important to be able to say, I don't know in poker and in life. And I, I think the, at least the American school system teaches you to have an answer. And if it's wrong, you get punished. If it's right, you win. But I don't know is okay. But you still have to make a decision. So realizing I don't know, I'm going to default towards the GTO strategy, which is to not fold great hands that flop well. So we call, flop comes ace, jack, five. This is a scenario where the opponent has presumably a range and a nut advantage. So he should be betting frequently and small. Turns out he does bet small. I don't know how frequently he's gonna be betting here, but he does bet small, which looks like he's just playing well with his entire range, which could include uh, some junky hands as bluffs like king four offsuit. It could also just be only nut hands. It's tough to know. So this is a situation where with no real reads, besides I'm playing against an old guy, I'm going to call because I need to be calling here with all of my gut shot draws, my backdoor flush draws, my pairs for sure. So we're going to call in this scenario with the intention of probably folding out on most turns if I do not pick up additional equity. If I turn a gut shot or if I turn a flush draw or queen or jack, obviously, I'm not going to fold. Um, but if I completely miss like the seven, if he bets 80K or 60K or all in, any amount, I'm just going to fold out here. And that's okay. A lot of people think that if they call the flop, they just have to be willing to call it off all the way. And that is absolutely not true. You'd not have to just blindly call down for no good reason. And in fact, from a balanced point of view, you should be folding out the bottom portion of your range every time your opponent bets. Now, this actually isn't even near the bottom portion of my range, if you think about it, right? Because if I have a hand like queen 10 of diamonds, that's obviously way worse. I'm obviously folding queen 10 of diamonds to a turn bet. And I'm obviously folding king queen of diamonds. And I'm obviously folding 10 nine of diamonds. So I'm folding all those hands that missed. So this is actually somewhere in the middle of my range. And you know, folding to a turn bet may actually even be a little bit tight. But I think whenever your tournament life starts to become at risk in, in scenarios where you know there are payout implications to, to some extent, even though when, once you get in the money, there usually aren't. You don't get payout jumps for a while. In those spots, I typically am a little bit more conservative. Anyway, he checks though. Good. <laughs> now do I bet? Well, the answer is obviously no, because if my opponent's competent, he could certainly be checking with some aces, especially the weak ones, just looking to check call down. If he um, checks and I bet and he folds, 
he's usually folding out hands that were drawing very thin. I mean, think about it, like how, how good could he actually be drawing here? If he has an unpaired hand, well, he has at most eight outs and he probably has more like four or zero. If he has pocket kings, will he fold to a turn bet? I mean, maybe. Notice I block pocket queen, so that's unlikely. So that means I'm really only going to get him to fold out like nine combinations of kings slash queens if I decide to effectively turn this into a bluff. So there really is no point in betting here. I'm just going to check and probably fold to a river bet because he could still easily have the ace high. But he checks again on the river. Now should I bet again? I mean, he could easily have the kings or queens, right? And those may fold to a river small bet or even a river jam. Probably a river jam would be way better to try to get those to fold. But I think the answer is no. My hand has plenty of fold equity. So we're just going to check it back. Let's instead consider what we would do if we had queen 10 of diamonds. Would I bet the turn? Mm, I don't know. If I had 10-9, I would definitely bet the turn if my opponent checked because then I have a gut shot. Yes, queen 10 is a gut shot too, isn't it? Um, the problem though is that when I have queen 10, I block the queens, like I said, but when I have 10 nines, I don't block kings and queens. And those are some hands that very likely would check the turn and then would fold to a turn plus a river bet. So I think with some of my effective not low hands, I would bet small on the turn, like 30K and then jam the river. I think that would be quite nice. And that is also how I would play my good aces and my good made hands. So I'd be playing my good made hands and my bluffs, semi bluffs in exactly the same manner. So that's generally what I'm doing in this scenario. This time it does go check, check, and I just win. Great, clearly this was not a super tight old guy, and he also didn't decide to run a bluff, which is fortunate for me. Um, notice how in that scenario I was thinking about how I would play my whole range though. Not just exactly this hand, I'm thinking about how do I play my whole range. And that is what you really want to do every time you're playing any hand, because that gives you way more experience than if you're just concerned about how do I play my exact two cards in this exact scenario. Whenever someone sends me an email, how do I play pocket tens? I never know what to do. You know that is a very novice player because they're not thinking about ranges at all. And over at my training site, pokercoaching.com, every month I present a homework challenge where I task the students with figuring out how to play their entire range in a situation, pre-flop, on the flop, on the turn, and on the river, from either a very GTO point of view or from a very exploitative point of view, depending on the topic of the month. And by going through all of those, I've had many students go from bad losing players to actually very strong winning players. And that is what I want to do to help you too. So go to pokercoaching.com in the free trial membership. We have three challenges there for you. You can hop right in right now and start significantly improving your skills. So check it out. It's completely free. It's there for you. Make a point to do it. If you don't help yourself, no one else will. So it's there for you. That's going to be it for today. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Enjoy PokerCoaching.com, and I will talk to you next time.